page 259, and we're now going to examine cardiovascular homeostasis adjustments to physiological stress. Now, anytime there is physiological stress, the response, the homeostatic response, will involve sympathetic autonomic motor neurons. The most important stress, the most common physiological stress to our body, specifically the cardiovascular system, is the effect of gravity. Gravity is constantly acting upon us. The only time when gravity is not a significant factor on our body is when we are lying down. So this picture right here represents an individual lying down. This is his head and here are his feet. Now, our, our first thought is, really, is that a person? Is that what they look like? All right, so let's look at a picture that looks a little bit more like a person. So here we see an individual who is lying down. When you are lying down, gravity is not preferentially pulling the blood either to your head or your feet. Gravity is acting equally on all parts of your body. As a result, the blood pressure and blood flow within your body is exclusively due to the pumping action of your heart. So let's look at the diagram above. So in this diagram above that represents this person lying down, the pumping action of the heart is what creates the blood pressure. We know that the average blood pressure in our systemic arteries is about 90 millimeters of mercury. We know that the blood pressure progressively drops as we go from arteries to arterioles to capillaries uh, and then to our veins. Uh, the blood pressure in the capillaries of our feet is about 26 millimeters of mercury. And similarly, the blood pressure in the capillaries of our head is about 26 millimeters of mercury. Average blood pressure in our veins is about 15 millimeters of mercury. These blood pressures in the blood vessels is due exclusively to the pumping action of the heart. You'll notice that I've written that the gravity effect on the body is minimal since all vessels are at the same vertical level as the heart. The blood pressure in the vessels is due exclusively to the pumping action of the heart. The blood pressure in your head is equal to the blood pressure in your feet and vice versa. Everything is great when you're lying down. But now let's consider what happens when an individual stands up. As a person stands up, gravitational pull pulls the blood and promotes its flow towards the feet and reduces the flow of blood up to the head. This is simply due to a gravitational pull towards the ground. On page 260, we see the same person now standing upright. Here's his heart, here's his head, here's his feet. And gravity is pulling the blood downwards. Now, what is the effect of gravity? We can actually measure this gravitational effect. We can simply take a U-shaped tube, orient it vertically upright, fill it with fluid such as blood, and measure the pressure at the bottom of that U-shaped tube. That pressure is due to gravity. Now, the general rule of thumb is that for every vertical foot, for every vertical foot difference, there is an increase or decrease in blood pressure by about 20 millimeters of mercury. So, in other words, if we had a U-shaped tube and it was four feet tall, the pressure at the bottom of this four-foot tube would be four times 20, or 80 millimeters of mercury. That pressure, so-called hydrostatic pressure, is simply created due to gravitational pull. So that means that when somebody is standing upright, whatever, the blood pressure in the capillaries of their feet is going to be 26 millimeters of mercury due to the pumping action of the heart, plus 80 millimeters of mercury due to this hydrostatic pressure created by gravity. Or, in other words, a total pressure of 26 millimeters of mercury due to the pumping action of the heart plus 80 millimeters of mercury due to the pull of gravity, or a total of 106 millimeters of mercury pressure in the capillaries of the feet altogether. Now, in the head, it's going in the reverse direction. 
If we imagine that the distance from the heart to the head is about approximately one foot, so the blood pressure in the capillaries of the head will be 26 millimeters of mercury due to the pumping action of the heart minus 20 millimeters of mercury due to gravitational pull. Now, uh, you'd say, well, where did you get 20? We said that for each vertical foot, gravity creates a pressure change of about 20 millimeters of mercury. Why am I subtracting it? The answer is gravity is pulling the blood down. It is increasing the pressure as we go towards the feet and decreasing the pressure as we go upwards away from the ground towards the head. So the actual blood pressure in the capillaries of the head will be 26 minus 20, or 6 millimeters of mercury. So we see that the effect of gravity is that it is causing the pressure below the level of the heart to increase, and it is causing the blood pressure above the level of the heart to decrease. These gravitational effects result in two major problems. Number one, the increased capillary blood pressure in the feet uh, causes increased filtration of water out of the capillaries into the tissues, the surrounding tissues, causing edema. It has now changed the balance of factors. We previously learned how capillary blood pressure Normally 26 causes fluid to squirt out of the capillaries, but conversely, we know that the plasma colloid osmotic pressure due to proteins osmotically draws water in. That's equal to about 25 millimeters of mercury. So there's a net filtration pressure of one. But now, because the capillary blood pressure is no longer 26, but 106, there is a much higher net filtration pressure of fluid out causing localized edema. This is why your feet swell when you're standing for any length of time. The second problem that occurs when one stands up is that as one is standing, the gravitational pull reduces venous return. It slows down the flow of blood from, uh, through the veins back to the heart decreasing venous return. So when one stands up, this decrease, return of blood back to the heart due to uh, gravitational pull, reduces the filling of the ventricle with blood. It's called a decreased end diastolic volume. If the ventricle fills with less blood, then according to Starling's law, it will eject less blood. That's a drop in stroke volume. The drop in stroke volume will cause a drop in cardiac output. The heart is now ejecting less blood per minute. And that decrease in cardiac output will cause a drop in arterial blood pressure. Now, as this blood pressure drops, all of this is happening within a matter of seconds as you stand upright. There are the baroreceptor sensory neurons located in the aortic arch and carotid arteries that detect that drop in blood pressure. They send that information to the cardiovascular reflex center, and that should activate the baroreceptor reflex. What's the baroreceptor reflex? Let's recall on page 254 that the drop in blood pressure information is sent via the baroreceptors to the cardiovascular reflex center, activating sympathetic autonomic motor neurons to the heart, the veins, and the muscular arterioles throughout the body. The sympathetics cause increased tachycardia, increased myocardial contractility, and venoconstriction. The venoconstriction increases venous return of blood to the heart, increasing and filling of the ventricle, increasing stroke volume. So the increased myocardial contractility and the increased venous return both contribute to an increased stroke volume and the tachycardia, together, these three things cause an increase in cardiac output. The sympathetic autonomic motor neurons cause generalized arteriolar vasoconstriction, which increases total peripheral resistance. Increased cardiac output and increased total peripheral resistance should together increase blood pressure. Returning back to page 260, so if the baroreceptor reflex is sufficient, 
This increased heart rate, increased myocardial contractility, venoconstriction causing increased venous return, generalized arterial or vasoconstriction increasing total peripheral resistance should adequately improve cardiac output, increase blood pressure, and increase blood flow to your brain. If it were to fall short of achieving that goal to compensate for the gravitational pull, there, will be, there would be a drop in cerebral blood flow, and that drop in cerebral blood flow can lead to syncope or fainting. You could easily test what we're describing. You could be lying down, stand up very quickly, and you will feel your heart rate start to speed up. You could take your pulse to prove it. You might feel your heart pounding more powerfully. You might, as you stand up very quickly, might almost look pale. Uh, uh, because of generalized vasoconstriction. All of these are a result of the baroreceptor reflex trying to counteract or compensate for the gravitational pull, reducing blood pressure and blood flow to your brain. Sometimes when we do stand up abruptly, we start to get this spinning sensation. We may start to black out or see flashes of light in our eyes. All of this is due to the drop in blood flow to our brain. But usually, when we do stand up, even if we experience that phenomenon, within a matter of seconds, it all goes away as uh, the blood pressure uh, to our brain improves and, incre and blood flow to our brain correspondingly improves. As we said, if the baroreceptor reflex were to fall short, the drop in cerebral blood flow would cause syncope, which means fainting, and if the person faints, that means they fall to the ground. And that is actually regarded as a homeostatic reflex because if somebody does faint and they fall to the ground, that returns them back to the horizontal position where gravity is no longer preferentially pulling the blood towards the feet and away from the head. So that immediately improves blood pressure and blood flow to the brain. The point being that if somebody feels like they're going to faint, you should actually tell them to lie down. Don't tell them to stand up and walk around. They should actually stand up. And in addition, you can use gravity to help that person rather than uh, work against them. Have them elevate their feet so that their feet are elevated and then gravity will preferentially pull the blood towards the head uh, rather than pulling the blood preferentially towards the feet. So one elevates the feet when somebody feels faint, and feeling faint is always due to a drop in blood flow to the brain. Some individuals have an impaired ability to compensate for this gravitational pull when they do stand upright. And there is a name for this condition. It's referred to as postural or orthostatic hypotension. The reason why it's called postural hypotension is because the drop in blood pressure is associated with this change in vertical position of the body as the individual changes posture. Now, this tendency uh, to have this impaired ability is uh, related to getting older. So individuals commonly, as they get older, they have an impaired sympathetic response to compensate for that drop in blood pressure as they stand up. Also, postural hypertension can be caused or exacerbated, made worse, when people are on uh, antihypertensive drugs. Drugs that are used to lower an individual's blood pressure may also tend to especially impair the baroreceptor reflex to compensate for standing upright. So if we look on the next page, 261, on page 261 at the top, so we can in fact see that as somebody goes from a reclining or lying position to a sitting upright to a standing upright position, you'll notice that there's a corresponding increase in heart rate. This is a part of the baroreceptor reflex to, to counteract or compensate for the gravitational effect. We've already said that gravity is the most common stressor, the most common stress factor to our body, specifically the cardiovascular system. In this picture, we can see an individual standing upright 
We see that the average blood pressure in his arteries at the level of his heart, such as the aorta, is the normal 90 millimeters of mercury. We've learned that 120 over 75 gives us an overall average of 90. The blood pressure and the veins at the level of the heart is almost about zero, maybe five millimeters of mercury, practically zero. You'll notice that when he's standing up, the blood pressure in both the arteries and the veins gets higher and higher as we move down towards the feet. So that the blood pressure in the artery, such as the aorta, is now not 90, but 170. The blood pressure in the veins is uh, up to 80. And we've said that the blood pressure in the capillaries is in between. It's about 106 millimeters of mercury. On the other hand, if we look at the blood pressure in his arm that he's got extended upwards, you'll notice that the blood pressure in the arteries is going down. So the blood pressure in the uh, subclavian and axillary and brachio and radial artery is going lower and lower and lower as we move upwards away from the ground. As far as what the blood pressure is in the veins, it's actually becoming sub-atmospheric. It is less than zero, less than atmospheric. And the blood pressure in the capillaries is somewhere in between. We've learned it's about six millimeters of mercury, uh, just six, in the capillaries of the brain. Now, one of the things that can exacerbate or make this problem of standing upright even worse is if somebody has an elevated body temperature. Elevated body temperature tends to lower blood pressure in general even before they stand up. Now, how might your body temperature be elevated? In two ways. You might be lying out in the sun, and if you're lying out in the sun, that raises your body temperature, or you may be running a fever. In either case, if you are lying down uh, on, uh, out of the sun or you're lying down in bed, and you either are in the warm sun or you're running a fever, in both cases your body temperature is elevated, you are much more likely to experience fainting or feeling as if you're going to faint when you stand up very abruptly. Now, why does this exacerbate the problem where your blood pressure uh, drops even more than normal uh, because of the elevated body temperature? We know that when you have an elevated body temperature, one of the thermoregulatory reflexes is generalized cutaneous vasodilation. Generalized cutaneous vasodilation increases the blood flow to your skin and increases radiative heat loss. So we wrote that uh, elevated body temperature on a hot day or running a fever tends to cause a thermoregulatory reflex cutaneous, generalized cutaneous vasodilation, lowering your total peripheral resistance and lowering your arterial blood pressure. So in other words, the person's blood pressure is already a little lower than normal. And when you stand up, what does gravity do to your blood pressure? It lowers it even more. So that drop in blood pressure and blood flow to your brain is what causes a person to either feel like they're going to faint or causes them to faint. The problem of standing up and, tr and trying to compensate against the pull of gravity is made worse. It is exacerbated with an elevated body temperature. 